This is the Retro Shed Workshop. This is where we fix stuff up and repair it and do all sorts of uh, other stuff that you don't normally get to see. Now, um, back in the summer, I was given a BBC Micro by a friend of mine who uh, wanted rid of it. Um, and when I powered it up, there was an enormous bang and a hell of a lot of smoke. Um, it took me a while to get rid of the smoke, but not the smell. And when the missus came home from shopping, she wanted to know what the hell that smell was. Um, and I explained that I powered up one of these uh, and it went bang. Now, this is my own one. Um, I was using this over the weekend. And when I powered it up, it, there was a bit of a snap and a crackle that came from it. Um, it didn't go up in smoke, but I did power it down rather sharpish. As some of you know, the power supplies in these have a nasty habit of giving out. And when they do, my God, there's a bang. Um, so I thought, well, rather than wait for that to happen to this lovely example here, I'll order a repair kit from uh, coolnovelties.co.uk, which has arrived. Uh, and I was going to come down here tonight and fix this BBC. But I thought you guys might want to have a look because there are some of you that are a bit like me that are interested in this sort of thing. So let's get cracking and fix up this beautiful BBC Micro. I ordered this kit from eBay, um, it's from Cool Novelties. I've had quite a bit of kit off them over the years, cables and stuff, they are very good, very reliable, um, and I wholeheartedly recommend their stuff. So what do you actually get in the repair kit? Well, not a lot really, it doesn't look like you need a whole lot. Uh, three capacitors and some cable ties. Now, I believe that's the one that gives out with the almighty bang. Step one, turn it upside down and get the case open. Right, next bit, uh, remove that power supply from the main chassis and I believe the three screws that secure that in are located underneath. We've got three screws that hold the power supply in, that one, that one and that one, uh, they've got to come out next. Once you remove the screws from the power supply, you turn the whole thing over, taking care that the power supply does not drop out of the chassis. And next is a question of removing these spade connectors um, that connect the power supply to the main board there. We've got a turbo MMC installed into this beam, as you can see, and those, those spay connectors need to be disconnected. Now with the lid off as well, you may as well remove the two screws that hold the keyboard in and put that to one side nice and safe. So now it's all disconnected, the power supply can actually be removed from the BBC itself. So what I'm going to do is just take, feed this power cable through there and then the whole chassis can be put aside safely because we don't need that right now. It doesn't look in too bad condition at all really, I'm not quite sure what went pop in there but the caps do look to be in quite good condition. Right, let's move on. Right, the next step is to remove the auxiliary power socket and that is done by pressing and squeezing these tabs here uh, and pushing the thing through the case. So the next step is removing the power switch from the power supply chassis and again that's a question of removing the connectors, uh, probably taking careful note of where they go, um, and pushing and pulling the lugs there that hold the switch in the case. Right, that took a bit of pushing and pricing to get that out of there. Um, there's also a little cable tie that I had to snap off one of the legs because there's a, there's a cable that's tied down to it. So next is removing those spade connectors from the switch and I would suggest you make a careful note of how those go on uh, because that will be switching the 240 volt mains. If you notice you've got live on one side, neutral on the other um, with that dividing piece of plastic between the two. You really, really don't want to get that wrong because when you flick that switch or plug it in and it is wrong, you're going to blow the hell out of it. So uh, make a note of those and then remove those lugs. 
the next step is to cut that little cable tie there that's holding that wiring loom in place. Right, next step, remove the uh, the two screws that are holding the earth cables in place. There's one at that end of the power supply and there's another one just there, so they need to come off next. Right, next step is to remove those, if I can focus in on them. Those three screws hold the main board in, so those got to come out. One, two, and if I can use the third, there you go. There's a third one down there. Uh, and there's some washers that uh, go underneath those, so make sure you retain those. Incidentally, I'm OCD about screws, so I always tend to put everything in a bag as I'm working. I've lost too many screws in the past in my youth uh, <laughs> not being careful enough, so everything goes in a plastic bag now, so I don't tend to lose anything. So one, two, three, next to come out. Now the three screws have been removed, we should be able to remove the power supply board from the case. Right, the next stage is to remove and replace the capacitors. Now what I've done, I've flipped it over and I've marked with a Sharpie in black which ones need to be replaced. The funny thing here is, the more I look at this board, the more I think somebody has already done this one. So I'm not sure what I heard popping in this power supply, but I can see some residue there that looks like something's already exploded. And that cap there does not look if I get a screwdriver, I can show you. That cap there does not look like the original one. I think this board has already been done. Um, but I may as well do it. You know, it's like a cam belt on a car, isn't it? Once you've done it, you know you've done it and uh, you feel better about it. So I'll crack on, even though I think somebody's already had a go with it. Okay, so there you go, that's the three capacitors removed. And I don't think they're originals, I think they have been replaced, so... Oh well, never mind. The new ones are waiting to go in. Right, just before I go ahead and solder these in, just a quick word of warning on capacitors. Many of you already know this, of course. Um, some capacitors are polarised, which means they will only go in one way, and some aren't. Now, electrolytic capacitors clearly have a negative side on the can marked, and on the other side, nothing. This is very important, some capacitors, if you wire them in back to front, they're going to explode pretty quickly. So if you look on the main board there, you'll clearly see that one hole is marked positive and the other is blank. Guess which way it goes round. If you get it wrong, it is going to pop. And it, they're quite loud and they, they generate quite a lot of smoke. Now these ones here, <laughs> non-polarised, no markings on the can at all. And if you look on the board, there are no positive or negative markings so make sure you get it the right way around you really don't want to get that wrong I always like to use a bit of IPA and just clean up solder joints. I've got my concerns about this repair because I don't quite know whether I've replaced what was causing what I think was the popping sound or... or mm. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to install this back in the Beeb and just switch it on because the Beeb is far too precious. What I'm going to do, I'm going to put it back in its uh, power supply case, power it on on the bench um, and take some voltage readings from this loom here and see whether we're seeing the right voltages and if anything else is going to snap or bang. So we are expecting to see 5 volts uh, on the reds on this wiring loom, plus 5 on each of these 
and minus five on the mauve coloured connector. Um, I'm not going to bother measuring those on the auxiliary there. There should be a combination of five and 12 volts there. Okay, that's good. The switch is in the on position. Now I'm going to be very careful, obviously. I don't want to be touching any of this. Um, and I'm going to move it slightly as well because what I do not want is that power supply falling onto the aluminium of my Mac. That would be a disaster. <laughs> I'm going to keep it on its side. I'm going to put the camera down a minute and connect up the, uh, the voltmeter and see what we got. Let's set it to DC 20 volts. Um, and I'm going to go over to the wiring loom now. Should give me 5 volts. There you go, there's no load on it. 5.16. This should also give me, yeah, 5.16. So that's correct. That looks good. And I didn't hear any pops or fizzes or bangs, so I'd say that's good to go back into the BBC now. So I'm going to unplug that and connect it all back up again. Just before I put this back together again, I am going to stop and I'm going to marvel at the design of this. I mean, this was, without doubt, Acorn's baby. Um, it's just so well put together. Alan Boothroyd, who was the designer of this, this case, did an amazing job. I mean, look at this, attention to detail. This is British engineering at its best. The plug fits, is molded, right? The plug is molded and goes straight onto the power supply and it fits through the case. I mean, that's attention to detail, isn't it? I mean, look at that, there you go. The plug goes through the case. There's no taking the plug off. There's no messing around. They put so much thought into this beautiful case. I mean, it's built like a brick shit house, isn't it? It really is. Beautiful workmanship. Anyway, enough. I'm going to put it back together now. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, that's everything back together again. Screws are back in the underside of the power supply. Wiring loom all connected back up. Keyboard's back in. Let's flick the switch. That sounds good. Right, so we're in the shed, let's give it a try. That sounds good, doesn't it? Oh, don't you hate the way they fly into you like that? Isn't it frustrating that your bullets only go so far? <laughs> yeah, it takes too long to turn your ship, doesn't it? Well, there you have it, one working BBC. Nice little job done before Christmas. So hopefully that's it, that's done. That's good for another, I don't know, what do you reckon, 20 years or so? There's no snaps, crackles or pops or smells. So hopefully this, uh, this gorgeous beep will be good for another few years. It's not a difficult job. Um, if you can wield a screwdriver and a soldering iron, it's pretty straightforward, really. It's not too bad at all. So um, I know now that it's good for another few years. So thank you very much for joining me in the Retro Shed this evening. Take care and we'll speak to you soon.